Hi, I'm Amy Whalen, and welcome back to Table Flipping Housewife, a channel where this housewife is braving the new world of electric tools and using them to flip furniture and to build simple home decor. Now, if you would like to see how I took a really sad, neglected, damaged dresser and bring it back to life to look like this modern beauty, stick around for my video tutorial. And before you go at the end, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. I've had so much fun reading your feedback. Now, let's get to this flip and we'll start with refinishing the drawers. The drawer pulls that I'm going to use just coincidentally happen to fit in the holes that are already drilled into the dresser from the previous pulls. With the exception of the two top drawers, and I'm not sure why those set into the drawer differently. So I'm gonna go ahead and patch those holes up with my plastic wood. But on this drawer, there's a broken piece. The corner is broken off and I've ordered some moldable putty to create a mold and it hasn't come in yet. So what I'm gonna to try to do is use my Bondo wood filler. You have to mix the two components together. It has a very smelly paste on the inside and you add this to it, you mix it up and it dries rock hard, but it dries really fast. So I'm hoping this works. So you scoop some of this out. No. Ooh, this stuff is stinky. Kind of like the smell, <laughs> but I'm sure it's not good for me. I should probably be wearing a respirator. All right, so you mix the two up. And let's start putting it in place. So I'm gonna build up this corner. Gosh, I wish I could use my fingers, but I can't. Let's see if we can do this. I just have to make sure I'm building it up enough one edge and there's another The next thing I did was I removed the decorative panel from the front of the dresser. I've done this before and it's actually much easier than you would anticipate because although there is some glue involved there, the majority of the piece is held in place with nails. So I simply used my hammer to wedge my screwdriver in between the two pieces and I pried it right off. Now my camera dried right before it popped free, but nonetheless it was quite easy to remove. So I was able to pry it off, and now that I have these two pieces off, I'm wondering if I'm going to bite the bullet and cut this whole bottom piece off and just purchase new legs. The Bondo has now set, so I removed the tape and started sanding. And you'll notice I fast forwarded through this, but it just took several angles with my orbital sander and then with um, a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a stick. So I'm making headway. I got a little ways to go, but overall I'm pleased. We now have a corner where we didn't before. So I'll just keep working on that to smooth these out. Okay, so I finished sanding all of the drawers. And am I crazy? But I kind of like the way they look right now. I like that shabby chic look. Yeah, I got it crazy. Now I'm gonna paint them, but I, I do kind of like the way they look right now. So they have been sanded down first with 150 and then 220 sandpaper. They're nice and smooth. The paint um, is pretty much off. I much prefer to sand it than I, than I do to use paint stripper. That's just a big yucky mess. I don't like it. So they're nice and sanded tomorrow. 
I will wash them. I still haven't washed the piece yet, but I will wipe them off for dust. Don't want to get them too wet because I don't want to disturb the fibers of the wood since we're pretty much down to raw wood. So I'll wipe them with a very wrung out damp rag and I'll clean the inside of them and I am going to go ahead and start painting the drawers. I'll have to do that inside because of the pollen uh, that we're having here in Georgia. The base I'm still working on so I need to repair the bottom and where it's warped and I have the wood to do that. What I'm still trying to decide is if I'm going to cut that fancy detail off the side with my handsaw and put on uh, new feet to the dresser. Don't know if I want to deal with that, so I'm still thinking about it. So we're, we will work on this more tomorrow. So I am going to go ahead and cut this decorative trim off the side. I've purchased some legs from Amazon that I will attach underneath. So I thought I was going to use my circular saw, but this little element gets in the way. So what I've decided to do is use my jigsaw. I have figured out where I want it to cut. I've measured to make sure it's the same uh, length here as it is on this side. So when it's cut, the table, the dresser will be stable. And I have clamped this ruler in place to use as a guide for my jigsaw. So here goes. did a thing. <laughs> That's so exciting. Let's do the other side. The paint on the top is different and it's not sanding as easily as the blue paint on the other parts of the dresser so ugh, I am having to use some citrus strip. So I'm up, I hate the stuff. I'm applying it liberally and what does it say to do? It says wait 30 minutes to scrape it up. So, we'll see. Well, this is impressive. All right. Woo oh, yeah. Wow. That is very satisfying. Well, clearly, the key here is to use a lot. I already have some plywood at home, so I'm going to go ahead and cut a new base for the bottom. That'll help with the installation of the legs. And I need to remove this warped, nasty-looking wood anyway. So, I'll get busy on that. Easy. 
So I'm going to use my hand saw, handheld saw, to cut this line. And this, I measured and drew a line so that I have something to go by. Um, I'm gonna line the edge of my saw with this line because as I get to the end, it becomes harder to see what, um, where I'm cutting. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, I did support the board here with something underneath so it doesn't just fall off and splinter, which might get in the way as I cut. But here I go. to tell you guys it wasn't until I was reviewing the video when I was editing this that I realized what a faux pas I had made I edited it out because it's so frightening to look at but as I was cutting this section even though I had supported that board on the left when I got to the end and it fell to the ground it drew me down to the ground with it with that saw running it was a great lesson learned I'll have to support that other piece much better next time. I cut the board smaller than the dresser itself so that when the dresser is upright you won't really see it. And here I am attaching it with some wood screws. So now I'm going to start sanding everything, uh, the whole piece. But I will start here. I want to smooth this out since it is plywood. It does have some texture to it. So what I'm going to do is apply some of this plastic wood here just to fill in any of the fibrous areas. Um, I'm going to let that dry and then I'll come and sand this smooth. So I'm going to get busy sanding the rest of this after I fill that in and then I'll come back and smooth it on the sides as well. have the whole thing sanded down and as you can see most of the sanding is down to the raw wood. So what I'm going to do is give it a good wipe down with a little bit of Dawn dish detergent in water. I'll do the same for the drawers inside and then um, once it's dried I'm going to give it two really good coats of Zinser Bin Primer. It's going to be important that I seal it well because I don't want any of the tannins in the wood to bleed through. And also, I want the primer to correct any painting issues um, that may exist from whatever paint they used on this previously. I think we have evidence of a pre-existing stain on the um, dresser. So that makes the primer even that much more important. I did go ahead and pre-drill the new drawer pull holes for those two drawers that needed them. I wanted to drill them before I painted it, so I got that done. I'm telling you, I have a newfound respect for Zinser shellac face primer. I think the key is to use this kind of a roller, the one with the nap on it, 3 8 inch nap, and um, it's really going to come in handy today with all this bleed through. So I'm wrapping this 400 grit sandpaper, it's super fine. I'm wrapping it around a sanding block and what I'm going to do for the whole piece, I'll just show you on this one drawer, is I'm just very lightly sanding it to get the surface smooth. I'm taking out any uh, fibers left from the roller and I'm also smoothing out any texture left by the roller as well. So I'm going to just give it a nice 
smooth sanding. Just like this. Then I'll take my brush. Love this brush from Harbor Freight. It is fabulous. I'm going to dust everything off. And then I'll take a tack cloth. Wipe it to make sure it's dust free. And then it'll get a third coat of primer where necessary. This drawer doesn't need it. Um, before I paint, bring it inside to paint indoors. I'm so excited because my legs came in. Yay! They're beautiful. I got these off of Amazon and they come with all of the hardware. And I'm really excited because I wanted to install them in the dresser before I painted it. It'll be easier to paint the dresser once it's elevated. These are really beautiful. They could be attached um, as is, but I do want them to match the dresser. So I'm, I am going to paint them, then I'll install them, and then I'll get to painting the dresser. Now, apparently, I need to drill a hole large enough for this to fit flush into here. This has to be down in the base of the wood. So what I did was I took this and I placed it in the corner, every corner of the dresser, and I marked with my middle with my pencil the middle hole. Okay. So this is where I need to go, right there. Ugh, I don't even have a drill bit that is big enough. So I'm gonna try this one. This is the I had a drill bit big enough, but not that would fit in here. Oh my gosh, this is driving me nuts. I told my son, this is scaring me. And he said, Mom, that's why you're doing table flipping housewife, to do things that scare you. <laughs> Here we go. And as I suspected, it's not big enough, so I'm just going to have to make the hole bigger with this drill. it and it did <laughs> all right okay I'm gonna do that on all four corners lovely. I bought a box of about 20 drawer pulls at a garage sale. They came out of someone's kitchen when she redid her cabinets. I think I bought the whole box of 20 for two dollars. And what I did last night was I sanded off what looked like it could be a little rust or just erosion and then I gave them a good soak in Dawn dish detergent to clean them up. And then I pulled out my rub and buff. It is a wonderful waxy material that comes in a variety of different metallics. And um, I just look at it. It's just beautiful. And I'll explain how I did it. Now, maybe I'm not supposed to use my finger, um, but I did. You can use a little rag if you want to. I like to use my finger. And it's wax based and you simply wipe it on. It sticks beautifully. That's all I'm doing. And look at the difference. It's stunning to me. And it's such an easy fix. Now, once I'm done with all of them, I'm gonna let them cure. I don't know if it has a curing time, but I'm gonna give it to it anyway. And um, I'll take a tissue. I don't have one nearby and kind of buff it. And then when I'm done, I'll seal all of them with my Krylon matte finish. And that's it. Well, good morning. It's paint day today. And what I'll be using is Dixie Bell's Sandbar. To apply the paint, I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Mini Angler. And then to do the detail work in the front of the dresser, I'll be using Zebra's um, what are they called? This is the square brush. It'll just make it easier to do the, the thin strips in the front. Dixie Bell paint is very thick. And um, 
Some people spray their brushes. I did a little bit of that too. But I watched someone yesterday or the other day spraying the surface with a little bit of water before painting. And that's what I'm going to do here as well. So it was kind of a trial and error, so let me just fast forward to when I was painting the side of the dresser. As you noticed, I misted it down with water, wiped it smooth with my hand, and then I just apply the paint in long strokes. I would cover a section of it. You'll see I'm covering a section of the side, and once that I don't know, eight inch section is painted from top to bottom. You're going to notice I then take my paintbrush and I go in long strokes from top to bottom to smooth it out and then I stop messing with it. Dixie Bell's chalk paint does dry to a nice smooth surface so I just smooth it out and leave it alone and then start working on the rest of the side of the, of the dresser. So that's done and I'll then move on to the next section and that's how I painted the entire dresser. I did end up putting on two coats and in some areas three with a light 400 grit sandpaper scuff in between and it the paint just settled beautifully. I'm very happy with the result. After the paint had a good 24 hours to dry I added probably up to three or four coats of Verathane's polyurethane clear varnish. I applied it with my Dixie Belle Mini Angler brush and I'm much better at it. What I've learned, as you can see here, is I applied enough polyurethane to cover the full length of the dresser and then I just sweep it in one direction and leave it alone. Then it was time to add the drawers. and add the drawer pulls back on. At the very end, I used Big Mama's Butter. It's a product by Dixie Bell. This one is scented in orange and it smells amazing. And I like to put it in the drawers to kind of condition them, make them nice and rich in color. And it also gives them such a yummy orange scent. I love it. And guys, this is it. We are done. Look at this beauty.